Yo, Isao, enough with the garbage. It's time to put you on quality tools. Hey, you guys gotta have some joy in this life, right? With over seven years in the game of iron, Olympic weightlifting, powerlifting, strength training, bodybuilding and nutrition, I've learned lifting is more than just numbers. It's a philosophy. I'm David Dexter, the gym genius, sharing my journey through visual storytelling to help you unlock your full potential in the gym. We all love tasty treats, but let's be real. Most of us aren't eating to optimize our body. We are eating for pleasure, convenience, or just out of habit. Well, Hisao's no different. He's got his guilty pleasures. Sounds familiar? Think of all the gains you're missing out on by sticking to your old habits. Not just physical gains, but mental clarity, improved mood, it's all connected. Today, we're going to uncover the specific changes we made to Hisao's diet that helped him lose 12 kilos in three months, right? Yeah, thank you, Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me, you'll pick up plenty of tips that you can apply to your own journey as well. Research suggests that for maximum muscle growth and repair, aiming for three to four meals a day, each containing a quality protein source is pretty close to ideal. So we're doing just that. Breakfast. As you have seen, Hisao loves his sugary cereals. We swapped this out for Greek yogurt oatmeal with berries, way more nutrients and sustained energy. And to up the notch and deliciousness, we also included some dark chocolate chips, some cinnamon and a teaspoon of honey. We need to collaborate with our taste buds. This will improve diet adherence by a lot. So when I first started the food experience, I uh, kind of like encountered certain difficulties because uh, I was accustomed to Burgers, shawarmas, and all of that. Uh, all of those shenanigans, you know? <laughs> because they were tricking me, you know? They were constantly tricking me because this tastes so good. This feels so good, right? But I kind of like was gaining weight, you know? My health was dropping and my mental clarity was just on the ground. So I thought that I could not live without sugar. And uh, Dexter kind of reframed that for me, you know? He changed the way that I would uh, perceive this detail. And he told me that I can put honey and chocolate in my morning meal and just trust that I'm not going to crave sugar because I use those two in my morning meal, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was a big change. I mean, I think food was a big part of the change, right? Yeah. So to make this clear, we're not perfectionists. We know there's shades of gray to this game. We play the long game, right? We don't try to burn out on the short run just because we make too abrupt changes to the diet. I tried to ease him in from his previous diet into the new one. And that's why he was relieved when I told him that he can still eat certain types of sugar like uh, honey and dark chocolate because Harm is dose dependent. And that applies to everything in life, right? Mm. So it was like a light bulb went above his head when I told him this. <laughs> and it made things a whole lot easier. Yeah, I mean, this is easy. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> and as you saw, he lost 12 kilos and we're not even dialed in as much as we can because there's no need to. As long as the basics work, why go further? I mean, I just respected the path that was laying in front of me, you know, and it was kind of like I knew what I had to do. So I just did that. And I think it could work for everyone if they just, you know, stick to a plan, stick to yeah. something. You would need someone to get inspired from. I mean, if Dexter would have not talked about it or drill ideas in my head about how I should perceive things, of course, I would be just, well, what? What are you talking about? You know, I would not respect him enough, maybe, to uh, kind of like um, take him seriously, you know, because I took him seriously in the sense that he said, you're, you're going to do it. And I was like, OK, let's see. And I saw the results and I'm like, oh, I was like, OK, OK, let's let's go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like the, the coach also has like a big responsibility, not only the guy or the girl who wants this path of like, you know, shedding all the fat and getting more muscular and stuff like that. So it's kind of like codependency in this sense. The coach in Dexter, you know, he has his experience that talks for himself. And I was just, uh, I, I wanted a change, you know, I craved it. 
right? That's what I got, a change. Yeah, so I really like the idea of not giving a man a fish, but teach him how to fish. And I, I laid the tools on the table for his saw and just let him, let him lose, okay? And let him wander, let him experiment around the lab. And I, I'm just a guiding force, you know, guiding him from the sidelines. Because that's how he can hammer those teachings into his head. If I just repeat the same ideas to him mindlessly, yeah, he might take his own effort out of it because I'm doing everything for himself. That's not really good for long-term growth, okay? Post-workout. Post-workout nutrition is key for recovery and growth. Our go-to meal of rice and tuna is a quick and fantastic option. We want the fast digesting carbs from rice that will replenish the glycogen stores and the protein from tuna that kickstarts muscle repair, optimizing your gains. Like the taste he saw? Yeah. Give me more. <laughs> However, it's important to be mindful of mercury levels in tuna. Choose lower mercury varieties like skipjack or light canned tuna and enjoy it in moderation as everything else. So right after the gym, uh, I'm hungry, right? And uh, I want to go and eat something and I have kind of, I kind of know what I would want to eat, but um, I heard that carbs are not, you know, something that I should approach and I should just go for proteins and stuff like that. But uh, in the same sense that, uh, you know, he told me about different stuff regarding food. He also said that I should reframe the way that I see carbs, right? Exactly. He saw said it very well. It's all about your framing around carbs. Now, I can understand certain people using the keto diet. No carbs at all. Different strokes for different folks. For us, carbs work just fine. We implemented them before and after workouts and we saw great benefits from it and no negative effects at all. So why not? Carbs are very important. They also work in combination with protein in the recovery processes. As I said, we don't do extremes. Maybe on the short term, we would have seen bigger effects in terms of fat loss if we eliminated carbs entirely, but also quite big negative effects like crashing energy, mood swings. So I'm no advocate of the keto diet. I never tried it. I also did my fat loss phases with carbs. I never went under 100 grams of carbs, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me know in the comments if you're using the keto diet and how it goes for you. Maybe we can learn something new. Why not? Yeah. Dinner. All right. Meal number three. This one's all about making sure his sauce body is firing on all cylinders. We've got a power combo here. Salmon packed with protein and those essential omega-3 fatty acids is amazing for recovery and reducing inflammation. Plus, it's brain food, keeping his sauce mind sharp for those intense workouts and music sessions. And a personal story on vegetables. I used to skimp on them up until 16 years old. Crazy to believe. I realized late that they're the hidden heroes of an overall well-being. They support everything from energy production to immune function. Don't underestimate their power like I did, please. I found out that uh, by doing all the things that were, you know, told by Dexter, um, the compound effect is a real thing, you know? Like starting from one thing, you can build from one campfire to an empire. I apply that now in my music process, in my vision for the future for the music, you know what I mean? But it's not just the music, it's also the way that my body is reacting to my perceived notion of this compound effect, you know? So I always tell myself, if I eat good and if I go to the gym, I just need to do this constantly at a pace, being guided, right? Because I can't do it all by myself because I would just lose my mind, right? Because I don't know exactly what I need to do, but I know that I need to keep at it. So the compound effect is one of the most important things if you want to grow as a human being in all domains that you choose to. The compound effect is a real thing that you need to kind of like connect to because you'll know that if today you're doing it, tomorrow you're keeping at it, 
then in three days, you're going to build something. You don't know what, you can't put your finger on it, but look at my body, look at his body, <laughs> look at the, the, I mean, you'll see in my music as well. The compound effect is a real thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would really like to talk about this. Um, understanding the notion of the compound effect will make your life much easier. Every facet of your life will be improved by this understanding. In regards to the diet, you'll know that every meal, every clean meal, every tracked meal will be a vote for the physique you want. And you'll also know that having a bad meal now and then won't do nothing because it's not enough to destroy that compound effect, you know? And you won't lose your mind over one meal. But if you don't know the notion of the compound effect, you'll fall in this trap of catastrophizing everything just because you ate a pizza and you weren't supposed to. And that's why having a coach, a good coach, is, is like an anchor, you know? He saw, certainly had some mishaps here and there. He ate a pizza, but he told me about it. I felt some guilt in his voice and I said to him, don't worry, brother, how many good meals you had this week? <laughs> Huh? And he said, 95% of them? Most of them. Most of them. <laughs> so you can go eat another pizza then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it might sound very philosophical, this compound effect. But just research it up, okay? And tell me how it affects your life. Imagine me pulling up a pizza right now. <laughs> 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 Snacking. Now, you know we prioritize whole foods for their superior nutrient profile. But if you saw needs a quick protein hit between meals, a shake can come in handy. Just remember folks, recent studies suggest that 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is a solid target for natural lifters. So you were saying about a coach being a good anchor. Mm. Um, an anchor is basically what can keep you in your life on a steady treadmill that can be really uplifting at some point because you're just going steady and you're, and you're just moving you know forward and um toward, towards your goals yeah and i always i was always goal oriented mm. and i for some reason just knew that i had to move without kind of like thinking too much of where i want to go because i would find out on my road you know mm. so I relate, I can relate to that. Yeah, you know how it is when yeah. you're just trying to find go yourself and go with the flow yeah. and just, you know, that's what I did for a long time. Yeah, me too. And while doing all of those, I mean, you know, while doing music, I was also speaking, right? Mm -hmm. I was also writing. I was also doing some th certain things. I kind of like started to envision anchors inside of these things that I was doing, right? And I started to write, you know, on paper, to visualize a certain kind of uh, anchoring method or mm -hmm. recalibration mm -hmm. technique. You know what I mean? Yeah, me and Hisao were talking about this. Uh, he came up with the idea of having a spider web and pinpointing each of his important domains in life, like writing, speaking, going to the gym, making music, creativity stuff, relationship stuff, pinpointing each on a certain point on the spider web like this, let me show you. Uh, it's yeah, just so a basic draft, but it's a draft. We're, we're working on it. You can see. And when he was saying this to me, a, a word popped up to my mind. What if we can call this a recalibration method, right? Recalibrating uh, your mind. Recalibrating because yeah. naturally, the mind likes to deviate. To wander. To wander. Exactly. Yeah. So you set yourself. You set some goals for yourself. You start hitting them, going strong at them. And suddenly, without even without even being aware, you start to go astray. And that's natural for everyone. To counter this, you need to have certain recalibration systems in place. And this is something we, we've been working on lately. And because it's good for a multidisciplinary approach because you can connect everything. Everything is interconnected, you know? We like to approach life as a whole, a holistic approach to everything, you know? And the spider web is very fitting for this, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, 
you know that everything is connected and if you really think about it it means that when you look at a certain domain if you know that domain you can see certain aspects of the way that you apply the things that you apply in that domain to other domains you know so let's say that i got let's say for example i get better or i got better at music right and the principles that i'm the underlining, I, the underlining principles that i'm using when i'm doing music or i'm crafting music or i'm using the program that i'm you know mm -hmm. uh, I can see certain things mm. in diff in different other domains, so you know. Exactly. There are everything is interconnected. You just have to see how and you need to understand how you see it in a such a way because you need to frame it for your mind. You need to you need to understand it in such a way that it would be helpful for you because there are a lot of things that won't help you. I mean, the way that you think, the way that you tell yourself things or even the way that you fr uh, that you uh let's say uh write yourself things on a paper in the, in the same way that we did, you know, yeah. in that calibration technique. I mean, we need to know exactly what does uh, represent to us. I mean, we need to know ourselves first. Yeah, and we need to establish goals because everything we do with techniques like this is always in the service of our goals. Yeah. We, we extrapolate from our goals always, you know? That's how, you, that's how we centered our lives, you know? Center our lives around the gym, around things that give us purpose and meaning, you know, around the channel and goals frame your actions. When your mind is set on certain goals, it makes you see things that are useful for your goals only. And it makes you reject everything else. It's like a natural filtering mechanism. The mind has this built in, you know, but only if you have your eyes set on something. Otherwise, the mind will wander. Again, I'm repeating it. Uh, so, uh, when you set your mind on goals, there is a blueprint of your subconscious that starts gathering the information that you set on the goals that you set, and your subconscious starts to kind of like follow the completion of that goal. Mm, yeah. But you need, but you need to set it. If you don't yeah. set the goals, you're just gonna be like, yeah, oh, what's exactly. this? What's that? Yeah, I don't understand exactly. this life. I want to kill myself. I want to <laughs> drink. I want to yeah. take drugs. You know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you try to find an escape if you don't have goals. If you have goals, you're gonna see that you're gonna be pulled in the direction of what those goals mean. And you need to have goals that serve others. Because mm -hmm. if you're only gonna serve yourself, I did that for a long time. And there are people who, who do that because they don't know that they can serve others, right? So even, even I, if I even, if everything I would do would seem that I would serve only myself, you would see that everything that you do as a human being, you will want from your nature to serve others. Yeah because that's the ultimate uh, experience of reality. If you serve others and you do it well, that's gonna give you a sense of purpose and meaning that you're gonna live your life with meaning right next to you. Yeah, and if you don't do that, you'll have high chances of being very miserable. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, in the sense that it depends on a lot of what you think, you know, maybe some people want misery in their life and you know, misery loves company. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, there is also the fact that uh, if you have a purpose and you dedicate your life to it, you will live a life that you will be, you know, proud of and you'll respect yourself. But it depends on your framing, right? Yeah. What framing and goals always yeah. come back to. So this is, we, we, we'll keep you updated on the technique. We're currently working on it. It's a rough draft but we try to implement it practically into our lives and see how it goes. We always love to play with certain systems. We're kind of nerds in mm -hmm. this sense, because if you look closely, everything is a system. Even if you don't want it to be, it still is. If you can't go around it, why not play it in the most optimal way possible, right? So that's why we always apply ourselves to learning, changing our minds, being flexible, elastic thinking, and certainly, this also applies to dieting, you know? Yeah. So there's no black and white in here, only shades of gray. We navigate life through shades of gray. Hmm. We got a couple of questions to answer from our Instagram story Q&A. First question, Lucas Pano asks, do protocols like fidgeting really increase the caloric deficit considerably for fat loss? Honestly, I didn't even know about fidgeting before I read this question. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Did you know about it? Fidgeting, basically, wh wh what's fidgeting? It's like moving small, mm -hmm. mm, small movements, right? So like nervous tics? Uh, kind of, but it's kind of like mm -hmm. if, if you put it in the gym, uh, you know, world, fidgeting would be like, I don't know, walking or like... 
Mm. What, what's your take on it? Mm. Let's actually read what fidgeting means. Yeah. You know, let's but probably if I didn't hear of it, I don't think it's something significant. Like it's not the meat and potatoes like a caloric deficit from food or cardio or, you know, so let's that, see. So that means, oh, look. So okay. fidgeting Pretty make small movements, especially of the hands and feet through nervousness or impatience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So nervous sticks. Yeah. Look, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, even if it does, I don't think it's a significant amount. I mean, you can't replace those things with. Nah, the, you can't replace the, the main stuff. And, yeah, you yeah. can't replace the main stuff. But thank you for your question. The next one, Diana Vlad asks. What is the best way to manage an injury at the gym? So, while I'm no expert in injury treatment and recovery, I have some experience with them. The first thing I would say is don't stop training. So, don't stop going to the gym if you're injured, except in the cases in which the injury is so severe that you can't move, right? That's common sense. Stay in pain-free ranges of motions. Stay in pain-free ranges of load, so you can load the bar as long as you're pain-free. If you have certain movements that are 100% pain-free, do them. Don't catastrophize the injury in your mind. That might be the biggest pitfall you can encounter in the recovery process. I had a really bad tendinitis right under my buttock, which took a lot of nerves and patience Doing certain things similar to what I said in the gym, it took me a year to recover from it. And even now I have some tingling pains, but nothing significant. You need to do movements that promote a lot of blood flow in the injured area. For better advice, you need to consult an expert on the topic. Take what I said with a grain of salt. It worked for me. Maybe it will not work for you. So this is a disclaimer. The third question also from Diana Vlad. How much money does Hisao have to invest in such transformation? Is it expensive? Well, before I started uh, this experience, I was uh, spending a lot on food. And when I say a lot, most of my salary and most of my, uh, you know, income was going to different uh, pubs, <laughs> different like uh, pizza places and uh, different uh, places in Bucharest, right? Uh, and I was I was in eating a lot. I, I enjoyed eating, right? Now, uh, regarding food, uh, money is not. It's not that of a problem because everything that I buy in keeping the meals that I eat is not that expensive. So you're saying that even if you you're eating healthier, it's way cheaper than before. But you're also living in Bucharest, and the prices there are higher. I lived in Bucharest, now I'm not, but uh, there I was like spending a lot on um, Delivery. yeah, deliveries, places that the food was expensive, but mm -hmm. yeah, you know how it is. But even if I would have lived in Bucharest, these meals are not that expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you certainly, know? certainly. You can certainly have good results on a budget. I can assure you that. Yeah. And also regarding supplements, we don't take that much. He saw us only taking the basic stuff, like a good protein, some creatine, and that's all I think. That's it. Yeah. You don't take D3? No. No, not, not an omega-3? No. Just, just I from mean, food? Yeah, just from Magnesium? food. Magnesium? Yeah. Yeah. Just so from, Just from food. They're like 3% of the whole thing, of the whole process. Yeah, they can help, but not that much. It's much more marketing than results, you know? So you need to be aware of that. And also the gym membership. Yeah. You can count that in. Yeah. Please, guys, don't think that you have to spend a fortune to get in shape. To get in shape. These are just limiting beliefs. Yeah. And there's a whole discussion about limiting beliefs <laughs> regarding training only because it requires discipline and because it's hard. We would rather have some reasons to not do the hard thing. Like this one. Uh, it's too expensive to eat right. No, I'm not saying that the questioner is implying that. I'm just saying that there are a lot of people who believe this, like it's too expensive to eat right and get into shape. Those are just limiting beliefs, my friends. So start off by getting rid of them. Uh, I would also like to add that it takes discipline to build a great life and to live it, it also, oh, yeah. you know, you need that discipline that you That's build great. to actually live. Yeah. 
and maintain it, right? The muscles, the food, whatever you want in this life, uh, if, if you want it at a certain quality and you also have expectations from yourself, you need to build that. And you can find ways, you can find workarounds. Take my example, take his example, and you can see a lot of people in this life that they, they made it, but not with a large amounts of money. They just had to use their brain and develop it first. And after that, they just apply that in the ways that they did everything they did, right? So money will come, but first just make the right decisions. You need to be resourceful with what you have. That might be one of the greatest qualities you can have in this life. Right, Hisao? Mm -hmm. We both are also artists. Yeah. Besides gym stuff related, what we're talking about mostly here on the channel. We come from an artistic background. We know what it means to find gold, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you want to live a successful life, you need to have that attitude of constantly digging for gold, even when you find it. Because as Hisao said, it's necessary that you don't forget about maintenance after you reach the goal set. And maintenance is just as important as the process of striving, you know? So there's that. The gym impacted the way I process how I see myself as an artist and how I see myself having an impact, right? Because I, and more impactful to me now. And that mm. kind of like will lay the grounds for what comes next. I want to add something. You also know what not to do oh. in the gym. And that simplifies the journey by a whole lot, my friend. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And another take is, I really think that Hisao had a pretty good and strong foundation when he came to me. Because I saw that in his approach how he approached his training, how he approached everything I said to him. He had that warrior mindset. And certainly he built it in years. So thank you for the questions, friends. We went into the program, into the gym genius experience based on what he had up until then. He accumulated new tools, new mental models. He made a lot of associations from the gym to his craft. What resulted was a virtuous cycle, you know? He took a break from his music when he first started training, when he first got the grasps of the basics. He needed that. He needed a refresh from the desk, from the program, yeah. from the drums. Yeah. You know, it was what he needed the most. So he came back to music with a whole nother approach. You just wait. We have something for you. Besides the Jim Genius channel, yeah. he's always working on something great a soul project, yeah. it will be the culmination of his craft as an artist. Yeah, exactly. All right, folks, that's a wrap on his house diet deep dive. Remember, the most impressive meal plan in the world is useless if you can't stick to it. We're about progress, not perfection. So find out what works, make it sustainable, and those results will come. Smash the subscribe button and let's crush those goals together. 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 <laughs> Menta sunt buncăr, slăbiciune este ignoranța în spuncă Fără ea nu mergi, poate face viața lungă Moartea este doar la suprafață, mă aruncă Frica are meu de la tine, ce mănâncă? Ce răspunsuri să cauți când ai întrebarea Sunt manifestarea, am sânge curat Sunt electrocutarea, scheletul din mine vibrează pe calea Conștient de ce n-ai, ești bolnav dacă stai A schimarea din marea de chestii ce sunt la o întindere Mâna ta macara, ești o extindere Natural pe un plan activ, aprinde-te lega la tot de ești fraiere Prost de ești, de ce vorbești, tot ce tu lovești Nu vezi ce orbești pe stare, ok ești Stai tu, ce bun, trece viața cimitirul meu E plin de vise, unde auzi tu filme triste Atât de sincopa psihocromatic, sunt psihodinamic Îmi iau plăcerea din tragic, e magic balansul pe cuantic Sunt post-traumatic pe neo Romantic, putere din oase pe viață Sunt necrometalic, pe sune sunt viața Și moartea pe care tu vrei să o auzi Să o citești, analiza din priza Din sare în care devei manifest Uuuuh Oh yeah We're gonna follow We're gonna follow on it At the right time, at the right moment Oh This is morphine Say hello Hello! <laughs>